I'm going to let you know. I'm going to continue my speech. If there is any interruption, that means check. You know, you can sit down and listen. And I told you there's a question and answer at the end. And I will take your questions and answer them. If you shout out at any point in this speech, you are going to be arrested and removed. As I was saying, while 95% of faculty are on the political left, only a small percentage are communist supporters of terrorists. And what is worse from my point of view, since this is a university, abusers of the classroom uh, and of the university itself. I have never, I have never, um, as I said, I've never called for the removal of anyone from their political point of view. And I have no objection um, to Marxists uh, teaching in their plenty of them on this faculty, uh, provided they teach in a professional manner and they teach according to the principles of a democratic education. For a hundred years in this country, uh, the obligation of teachers has been to teach students how to think, not tell them what to think. What this means is that when a ma uh, an issue is controversial, when we're talking about an opinion, the professor does not teach their opinion as though it were a scientific fact. <laughs> and the professor makes, uh, or the instructor, uh, makes apparent to the students that there are conflicting views on the controversial issue and assigns readings um, from different different viewpoints. Um, that is what teaching is. If you want um, to be told what to think, you enroll at the University of Atlanta or the University of Tehran uh, or the University of Damascus or any totalitarian state, and they will tell you, and they will tell you um, what to think, which is what the government wants you to think. Unfortunately, there's a whole section of our university at this university. For example, the Women's Studies Department, the Communication Studies Department, are political departments and not academic departments in any sense of the word. And indoctrinating students are uh, spreading its doctrines to other departments since Every law faculty will have a feminist professor, uh, every English department, uh, and so forth, every history department. Um, one of the courses that we described and taught at the University of uh, California, Santa Cruz, <coughs> is described in the official university catalog in these exact words. The goal of this seminar is to learn how to organize the revolution. And then it tells you that the revolution would be organized as a an anti-capitalist revolution. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I uh, one up Professor Cloud on that one. Yeah. <laughs> um, now, is it appropriate to teach about revolution in a university course? Of course it is. But the way you teach about it, if you're teaching in a democracy, and not in a totalitarian state, is that first of all, you look at what is a revolution. There are many different views of what constitutes a revolution. Then there are many different kinds of revolutions. The French Revolution was different from the American Revolution and the American from the Bolshevik Revolution. Uh, then you ask, what have been the benefits of revolution? And we all know the American Revolution had many benefits. Bolshevik Revolution, in my view, had none. The costs, then you look at the costs, 
you look at the benefits and then the costs. Um, the cost of the Bolshevik Revolution, of any bomb, all of Marxist revolutions, was 120 people, million people murdered in peacetime, slaughtered, 120 million, and an entire continents bankrupted. Russia, before the Bolshevik Revolution, was the breadbasket of Europe and produced a surplus, surplus of grain. Um, exporting grain. Because Marxism is a, and was in its day, and has been proven over the last hundred years, a completely, utterly fallacious economic doctrine, which does not, <clears throat> um, the result of the collectivization of agriculture in Russia was to produce famines. Uh, in the 1930s in Ukraine, 8 million people were deliberately starved by, uh, by the Stalin government. Uh, but Russia had chronic food for, uh, shortages uh, for its entire uh, Soviet history. And the reason is very simple. As a Marxist, I read a whole library of socialist books and particularly Marxist books. Um, I don't remember ever reading one chapter in one Marxist book on how to create wealth. <laughs> Marxists have no idea how to get people. Marxists have no idea how to get people how to get people to work. Therefore, they they force them to work. That's why every Marxist revolution has been a bloody, totalitarian, oppressive regime. Yeah. Could I ask the officers, when you see somebody talk out like that, just remove them, please. Sure. This is the third morning. Mr. Horowitz has been very patient, but further disruptions will result from the university police escorting you from the building, at which time you may be arrested. UT students may be subject to university discipline, and everyone may be subject to criminal charges. Thank you. Um, 